Okay, good afternoon to all the viewers. Today we have our second conversation with Bernard Lee, who's the CEO and founder of Hedge Spa, headquartered in Singapore, an investment management firm that he's going to talk about in a little bit more detail. In our first interview, we had a general overview of the history and the company and Bernard. Today, he's going to be a little bit more specific about the unique investment approach that they're taking. So welcome, Bernard. Nice to have you back again. Thank you. OK. Tell us, what are the traditional approaches to investment management taken by your competitors? Um, what, what, what has that been historically, and how is yours different? Okay, so I assume that you mean the traditional investment management workflow used by Correct. other competitors of investment analytics solution, similar to us. Correct. Okay, so the traditional investment process is made up of a few steps. Asset selection, portfolio construction or rebalancing, decisions and execution, and finally reporting. Our solution follows a very similar process. These are a few things that we've noticed with our competitors' platforms. First, most solutions tend not to take a holistic approach. For example, they may only focus on asset allocation. Then you have to fit the selected asset into the asset allocation model. That does not work well in practice. In other words, you should consider whether there is favorable asset or not in a preferred sector before increasing the allocation to that sector. Of course, the barrier to entry is much higher for vendors who take a more holistic approach than instead of like, you know, just building uh, one step at a time. The second point is that uh, many providers rely on daily position feed from upstream and do not have what we call a transaction engine. In other words, as soon as that upstream fee, let's just say it's from a broker or a private bank, as long as that speed is broken, which happens uh, quite a few times during the lockdown months, everything downstream is broken accordingly. And third, and finally, most systems can only work from a relatively rigid, well-defined set of data. They are not designed to find signal from as much data that is available to the user, or even understand unstructured data, such as news and social media. That's the very nature of financial data. Unfortunately to our competitors, systems are often built by technologists who are simply following specific specification mechanically. So in summary, our competitors tend to build traditional approaches based on historical volatility versus what we are doing involves integrating historical fundamental data as well as news and sentiment from all available sources. So fundamentally, the approach is different. What we have built requires a certain amount of deep tech as well as time and effort. So that should differentiate us from other players because building this requires significant upfront investment. Because of the cost and the development time, we do not believe that, that there will be more than a very small number of players who can offer anything comparable. Okay, that's interesting. Having taught in a more traditional approach to investment management, I can relate to the difference between structured and unstructured data. All of our analytics were based on security prices and how to formally integrate news feeds into that was just something that we didn't go into. So you've got a different approach. I think the it's referred to as graph theoretic models. Give the viewers an overview of, of what that is all about. So um, on top of the more sort of traditional approaches, uh, we at Hesba are looking for more effective way to work with the younger generation of investors. Uh, I think they are poised to uh, essentially disrupt the traditional thinking in the investment uh, industry. And a few things we notice about them are the following. Right? First, uh, these so-called Generation Z investors want to be in the driver's seat. Uh, secondly, they often demand some kind of a social element, 
uh, like for instance, scanning the posts of fellow investors by keeping track of articles and posts, uh, which in particular investment like. Uh, and uh, we saw that very much uh, you know, with GameStop, right? And then the third component is that uh, a significant attraction to uh, these younger investors may involve the ability to scan for ideas and sentiments in foreign and less familiar market or scientific domains, right? So we think we're in a unique position to support these investors because our underpinning analytics uses uh, the same graph theory principle that are used impressively and successfully by the internet giants. Uh, for instance, they use them to compute page ranks. So the approach, that's why the approach is fundamentally different. Okay, now that's an interesting analogy. So it's, it's some similarities to the approaches used by the tech giants. Tell us a little bit more about how they use it, and they, that may help the viewer understand how it can be applied in investment management. Sure. Um, these graph theory uh, approaches were used impressively and successfully by internet giants. Uh, one very notable application is that it was actually published uh, by one of the internet giants uh, as a method for uh, them to compute page ranks. Um, so a very good analogy uh, may be seen from the following. Um, so I'm sure you're a user of Facebook and uh, you probably find that Facebook all, often feels like it's creating your content because it's not just showing the posts from you and your friends, which is very easy, but also the posts of perceived poten potential interest to you. So essentially, what we call the graph data represent user likes, okay? And they can be used to map out sub-segment of, say, fewer than uh, 1,000 users from among billions of Facebook users. So uh, that way, you don't have to sort through all the different potential combination of grouping explicitly. So this is the kind of uh, very advanced mathematics that allow the internet giants to sort through um, a huge amount of uh, data within the computational capacity um, of today's computer. So in fact, um, uh, one of our scientific advisors to the company uh, is a, a professor of electrical engineering at uh, Imperial College London, uh, uh, Professor Tony Constantinidis. Uh, and I think he recently gave, gave a quote, uh, which is, uh, at our financial signals processing lab in Imperial College London, we have been working on graph theory problems for decades. These techniques have been used by leading financial institutions in the city of London, but anyone starting afresh will find it quite inefficient to build his arsenal from scratch. What the industry needs is a reliable provider of such analytics on the cloud who can work effectively with the financial institution. Um, so um, I think uh, uh, we'd like to show the cover of a newly published book co-authored by Professor Constantinidis. Uh, the title is uh, Data Analytics on Graphs, and uh, which contains a lot of discussion, uh, not just on the kind of application that we do, but also on application ranging from image processing all the way uh, to the kind of techniques being used by the internet giants. Okay, and the, the viewers will be able to see that book cover when they're, when they're watching this video. Okay, so let's now talk about your sort of business approach plan of attack. How, how are you going to get this out in the market? Okay, so we use um, similar techniques like graph theory, but obviously it's a little bit tailored for our needs, right? Uh, to give our user, uh, users of our platform, the ability to identify market drivers and sentiment. Uh, and these market drivers and sentiment are uh, in line with their, uh, the user's view, but not just purely based on their own or their immediate friend's views. This allows the younger generation of investors to invest by customizing their own unique signal by suitably weighting their own sentiments, their friend sentiments, and overall market sentiments 
in an automatic calibration framework against real-world success. User can then assign customized weights or simply remove their own sentiments uh, when analyzing, say, foreign or less familiar markets that uh, they really don't have an opinion on. Doing all of the about will allow the younger investor to invest in a manner based on uh, what we answer in uh, questions two, uh, in the second question, as you stated about. Okay, just a follow-up question, uh, a word that you emphasize, customize. So every one of your clients would potentially have an investment solution customized to their specific needs and different to the others? That's the idea, uh, because they can choose, right? How, well, first, uh, we identify, we, we use some techniques to identify uh, the sentiment that's relevant only to them, right? Mm -hmm. And then they can choose how much weight they want to give to that signal and calibrate uh, uh, within some predefined range uh, how much uh, weight uh, will, make that, uh, uh, will make their investment signal. Mm -hmm. So all these things are entirely customizable by, uh, by them. And uh, this is what we mean when we say the younger generation of investors uh, want to be in the driver's seat. And more importantly, what we're finding and what we're hearing on a very consistent basis is that um, the younger generation are no longer interested in um, uh, the sort of the more, more, more old-fashioned uh, uh, advisor business where uh, there will be an advisor uh, coming to deliver, let's just say, uh, you know, we charge them, let's just say, 80 basis points a year uh, to manage their portfolio. And it's kind of like uh, someone saying, thank you very much. I'll see you in a year, right? That is a model that I think a lot of these younger generation uh, do not partic particularly, uh, do not seem to be keen on. Uh, many of them use, uh, uh, you know, have mobile device and, uh, you know, they work in a tech sector themselves. So it's like they're very comfortable with uh, uh, if they understand the techniques used by the AI engine to drive this, they're very comfortable uh, as long as they get to set the constraint. So by having this ability, but you basically what you have is uh, every user gets to tell the robot what the robot, what do they want the robot to do, right? And then the robot will come back with recommendation, and if they like, they can tell the robot, okay, well, please execute automatically. Or they can tell the robot, oh, you know, just pop it up on my uh, phone and tell me uh, when there's a signal to buy and sell, right? And then they will want to take a second look at that, right? So what we are finding just from talking to potential users and getting market feedback is that uh, there's a fundamental change in the way that people would like to receive investment ser management services, no longer saying that, hey, you know, guess what? I'm going to give you a bucket of money, right? You tell me uh, how much fee it is, and then at the end of the year, I'll see whether I like the performance. And then uh, and if I don't like the performance, I will uh, uh, find a different <laughs> uh, manager, right? That, that model seems to be, uh, work very well for the last generation, but a lot of firms are telling us that they are facing the challenges when they get into what we call a transition situation, meaning that the second generation is inheriting the wealth, and then the second generation are making very explicit that uh, the sort of the usual whining and dining, I mean, uh, by your private banker, they are all great, but uh, to them, that's not, where, what, that's not the value added uh, they're looking for. Okay, interesting. Now, my background is just sort of general business and finance, but it sounds like technology is becoming almost more important than than business theory in today's investment management. So let's let's talk about the resources needed. Um, you must need huge computing resources to be doing this sort of um, investment approach. Uh, indeed. Uh, as you can imagine, right, the amount of data and computational power required to analyze everything we have described can be massive. Um, and also, the other problem is the size of the problem grows exponentially based on uh, both the size of the investable universe and the amount of data point, 
points collected for each asset. Hence, one of our goals is to use powerful supercomputers to benchmark the best available performance relative to other techniques such as uh, using, uh, let's just say, a, what we call a DGX cluster, which is uh, a GPU-based system, and also a quantum computer. Um, and very fortunately, the main power component of our R&D program is currently supported by uh, generous single government grants. Okay, okay. And so it's not just technology that, that's fundamentally changing, but it sounds like the, the people who are involved. When I started investment banking in the 80s, they were all just people with MBAs. Now, when I listen to you, you're talking about people who advisors who are scientists and very different backgrounds. So what, what sort of people um, are, are Hedgeball today driving this change? Uh, well, I think as you correctly point out, I mean, a related issue is the kind of people that you will need to build and run such a platform. A big emphasis in our recruiting effort is that we do not separate out the domain expert, the so-called business analysts, from the programmers. Um, and the reason is that uh, there's a typical back and forth between the business analysts and the coders, and that back and forth tend to ex Spend the development time by at least 10 folks. Uh, and that's because the programmers often do not fully understand business requirements. And then the deliverable get kicked back when the business analysts start doing the testing and so on. So a lot of things got lost in the communication. And that's why uh, it is just expanding the process by about 10 times. Uh, so I think the way that we can address that problem is that if anyone wishes to join our team, they must understand both the substance of what we do and be able to code up a prototype, at least in Python or R, if not in C++ and Java. Of course, in reality, job candidates come in all flavors, so we have to train them to fill the gap. Uh, and fortunately, since I was in charge of PhD recruiting and training globally as my side job at BlackRock, uh, we have been able to leverage from that experience and do quite well with our training program. Uh, I would say that's one, actually one of our secret sources to our success. Interesting. Interesting that you should mention the, the, the knowledge of programming languages. When I was teaching at a university in the UK, a master's of investment management, there were 10 master's programs and only one of the 10 actually taught programming languages. That, that was about 10 years ago, but it shows how the, the knowledge base for someone entering the industry has become much more technology driven. So that's interesting to hear. So let's go, let's go to the final point, the rollout. I think it was exactly one week ago last Friday, you were making a, a virtual presentation in Japan. Um, tell us a little bit about what that was about and, and what's happening with Hedgespa in Japan. Okay, so last Friday, uh, we were uh, privileged to be invited to announce a formal launch of our Japanese uh, terminal product in an event hosted by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and uh, managed by the Deloitte Tomasu Japan. Um, we were the only inbound financial technology company to uh, invited to present at that event. Uh, so um, we would include an official video uh, for the audience. Um, uh, the point is the company's full service application, terminal product, help site, marketing collateral, and web page are all available now in the Japanese language. Uh, so following, uh, uh, the launch in Japanese. This week, we are releasing a similar solution with uh, full Chinese language support in both traditional and simplified Chinese. And the test site uh, cover all the greater China market, including the China A shares, the H shares, Hong Kong, and Taiwan market. So um, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll also uh, love to include the links to a couple of videos uh, that show how our analytics can be applied to uh, different buy side verticals such as insurance and pensions uh, for traditional investment managers and also for uh, private banking advisors. The viewers at the, the very end of this video will have um, a still shot that they'll see of all of those links that they can click on and watch if they would like to do further. Okay, that's great. That's that's a great update, Bernard. I mean, we, we spoke just a couple of months ago, but it seems like the um, 
the head spa is is moving forward quite well and with, with a lot of good successes and it's um very interesting to hear the different approaches particularly as someone who used to teach investment management in a more old school way um i sort of wonder whether i'd be employable these days but it's certainly very interesting to listen to so thank you very much for your time and um let me just end up um at this moment one two one two three